Hello there and welcome back to my channel, Rover Turbo. In this video, we're going to be working on the wife's car. It's due a major service because I believe the last couple of years I've only done oil services. So I think she's probably done nine, ten thousand 10,000 miles since the last oil service. And I believe it's been a couple of years, probably maybe 12, 24,000 since I've done a major service. So all of the filters, so we're gonna get on with that in a minute. So before I carry on with that, I'm just gonna say the usual, please like, subscribe, comment. It really helps the channel out. Feel free to go back and have a look at all my other videos. This is a car-based channel where I buy uh, broken cars, Land Rovers, Range Rovers, all kinds of different cars. Generally the oddball ones that no one's really interested in with odd faults that everyone's tried to fix themselves and haven't been able to get them fixed. And, uh, and sort of video it and take you along for the ride. How to videos, that kind of thing. So yeah, please like, comment, subscribe. It really helps the channel out and uh, it gets those views up. It gets those watch hours up and it, it really helps things move along. So let's crack on. So the first thing you need to check is all of the lights, the headlamps, the main beam, the dip beam, the indicators, fog lamps, if they've got them, daytime running lights. Uh, you need to check those with headlamps on and the headlamps off, all of the indicators, the repeaters you also need to check things like the high level brake light fog lamp reverse light also number plate lights stuff like that check the rear wipers you need to make sure that the wipers are all physically intact so do a visual check of all of the wipers make sure there's no splits no tears and not splitting at the ends and actually do a physical wiper test check the horn next you want to go around and lubricate all of the door hinges door catches the rear doors on the boot lid the hinges the bonnet um, bonnet hinges if you can get to them and basically what I use is a maintenance spray it actually call it maintenance spray which is actually like a, a very sticky spray solution rather than uh, something like white grease so go around and do all the door hinges do the door latch do the hinge pins there, there, and also the check strap as well. The stuff I use is this Worth high pressure uh, resistant spray. It's basically just a sticky, they call it, it's called a maintenance spray, which you can also use. So yeah, as before, under the bonnet, spray all of the, all the pivot points and everything. The latch down in here, obviously both sides. Now under the bonnet, we're going to start off with a visual check. So we're going to check to make sure there's nothing hanging off or there's any soot or oil or anything like that. So if you can, remove the engine cover. So we're going to check under here for anything loose, rubbing through, any ejectors leaking, any puddles of diesel, petrol. We're going to have a look round everywhere just to make sure there's nothing obvious it's hanging off broken and the next thing we're going to do is check the auxiliary belt so we need to check uh, we want to to check for the auxiliary belt first of all if you can see the writing on it secondly um, if it's all worn and smooth and then thirdly if you can get to it, which you can just see there. If the ribs are okay and not split or fractured. This has been replaced relatively recently, so I know that that is good. So other underbonnet checks include the water content of the brake fluid, the antifreeze content and the battery and topping up the washer fluid. Okay, first, so we're gonna check the brake fluid for water content. So you use it one of, using one of these pens, which basically tells you the percentage. So we've got green, we've got yellow, and we've got red. Okay, so there's a cap on the end. You remove the cap, so you've got these two prongs, you need to put that in the brake fluid. So I've had to use a syringe to pull some out of there because it has quite a restrictive angle in there. So I've just popped some into a clean pot. So turn it on, you basically dip that in there and that tells you the 
percentage of the brake fluid. So I know this brake fluid has been replaced relatively recently, so I know that that is all good. So that's the brake fluid. Also, you want to check the level in here as well. That's not necessarily important if you haven't got a fluid leak because this level will go down as your pads wear. So if, you're, if you've got wear on your pads, this level is going to go down. If you top this up because you think it's low and then you have your brake pads replaced, it's all gonna come overflowing. So this should be a constant level. So only if it's very, very low, unless you have a fluid leak, then you shouldn't need to top this up at all. Right, next thing we wanna do is check the coolant, check the coolant level. And we also need to check the coolant strength in there. So the first thing you need to do before we take the cap off is make sure the system isn't hot or pressurized before you take the cap off. Never take the cap off when the system is pressurized. The next thing we need to do is using this unit here, is take a sample of the coolant and put it on where that blue section is. And then you look through there and it tells you the percentage of the antifreeze. So we'll do that. So you put a little bit of a sample on there. Basically close the lid down. There you go. So that basically tells you the percentage of the antifreeze and the freezing point. So we can see there that there is a, a larger mixture of antifreeze than there is the water in there, which is fine. Next thing we need to do is to check the battery using this machine here and this tests the capacity of the battery so we just need to simply connect positive lead to the positive terminal of the battery and the negative to the negative system powers on tells you the voltage of the battery battery test enter to tell, asks you for the battery type. Okay, so I know for a fact that this is an AGM battery, as it says there, and it's an 800 amp EN. Select rating EN, yes, and then we need to adjust the capacity up to 800 amps. Okay, 800 amps EN, test capacity, yes, testing. Okay, good and pass, it's saying 729 amps EM, which is fine, obviously you can print that out if you need to. Okay, so that's all the under bonnet checks done. Next thing we're gonna move on to is to do a physical inspection of the wheels, tires, and the underneath of the vehicle. And then I'll move on to doing the service items in the engine bay, which is the air filter, We've got the pollen filter inside. The oil filter on this vehicle is underneath, so you can do that from underneath. But any vehicle that you have that has an oil filter above, you need to take that out first before you drain the oil. So then the old oil then drains back into the sump. So ideally, you wanna get all four wheels off of the ground because you're gonna be wanting to turn the wheels, rotate the wheels. Obviously you can do front and rear, but obviously I have a ramp here, so it makes things a lot easier. What I do on here is I stop the ramp around my chest height. That then allows me to then go around and check. So basically you want to have a check of the tires. So you want to check the sidewalls for lumps, bulges, splits, both sides. And you also want to check the tread as well. Check the road spring, make sure that it isn't broken. There's a piece of coil snapped off. You want to check the discs, make sure there's not a large lip on them, the lips are in good condition. You want to check the brake pads. So you want to pull the wheel all the way to the stop one direction. And that then allows you to get in here and check the brake pipes for splitting, CV gator for splitting, any boots. joints, anything out of the ordinary, drop links. Basically what we want to do is just grab everything like the drop links, give them a good shake, the track rod ends, give them a good shake, check the bush, the boots. Then you want to be grabbing, you want to be grabbing the wheels at half past 12 and quarter past nine and give everything a good shake. So you want to go side to side 
and then up to down, up and down with both hands. That will check for play in ball joints, track rod end, wheel bearing, stuff like that. You can also run your hand over the tire, check the flat spots. And also wheel bearings you can check by holding onto the road spring with one hand and then spinning the wheel with the other hand. And if you've got a rough wheel bearing, you will feel it in the road spring. So basically we're gonna do that for all four wheels and all four tires checking for tread, damage to sidewall, both sides. So underneath, you do again all of the same visual checks. I'm going to undo this tray and check the bottom of the engine. So while you're under here, obviously check all of the inside of the tyres, boots, everything else that you couldn't see from the other side. It's all in good condition. So this car has got 160,000 miles on it. So everything is in really good condition for the mileage. So, but this car, the gearbox has been out, the chain's been replaced. It's had a lot of new components in it in the last year or two. So as you can see, everything all down here is no rust to, to see or to speak of. This is a 14, 2014 car. So it's got a lot of mud on it, but it needs a good jet washing off, which I will do this summer. Again, check for your springs. Sometimes it's the pigtails that fall off on the end of the springs, top and bottom. Sometimes they're just sitting in there. So again, springs, you wanna check the shock absorbers, make sure they're not leaking. There's no fluid leaking. Check brake hoses. Make sure they're not split, make sure there's no leaks. Check bushes, shock absorbers. Just literally have a good look round for any damage, any corrosion, any rust. I've given this a cut of paint before in the past, but I probably need doing properly at some point. This is the only point on the car that actually has got any corrosion on it. So give the exhaust a bit of a shake. Make sure all the bushes are all good, all the hangers. Make sure they're all still hung. There's no obvious splits or leaks in any joins on the exhaust. So I'll get the under tray off. We'll have a, have a look at the bottom of the engine and we'll drain out the oil and do the oil change. So next we've taken down this particular model, it just sort of folds down and these are just sort of half turn screws. I always make sure I put some copper slip on all these when I put it back together in time I do it. So have a good look round. Engine mounts, any leaks, any drips. As you can see this is all dry. But this is all again, this is the gearbox has been off, the sump's been off, it's been resealed. This has all been apart recently. So that is all good, no leaks to worry about. So here on this particular engine, we have the oil filter in the sump and the sump plug. So this is a 14 mil and this is a 24 mil. So we're gonna get the drainer and we're gonna drop the oil and drop the filter. I've already cracked it loose. So while that's draining away, we can do the oil filter. The easiest thing to do with these is just loosen them up enough just so they start leaking. And let them drain out. So here are the filters. This is just a kit that I bought on eBay. I bought it as a complete kit. And we've got the fuel filter. And then the O-ring, we've got the oil filter.
with the gaskets and o-rings and then we've got an air filter and a pollen filter okay so that's literally just now just down to a drip unless you wait for hours and hours and hours you're never going to get every single little drip out what i like to do before i put the sump plug back in is i like to just give it a wipe over i know you're not going to just to get any grit or anything off of the mating surface clean up the sump plug and then check the wash this one's got a rubber washer so just check that is in good condition before you put it back in again and then just tighten that up there is going to be a manufacturer's torque specification on this and sometimes they actually are written um, on the actual sump itself or around the sump or something it's not a lot um, if you worried about over tightening it check the torque specification and do it up um, otherwise it's just going to be a nip up it's a rubber seal or a crush washer it doesn't have to be that tight so as regards to the oil filter in here obviously take the old oil filter out and then we've got the rubber o-ring around the outside here which we just take off with a pick and there's a new one in the kit and also sometimes you'll have a, a bit plastic bit sticking out but we'll have an o-ring on the end if it's in the kit replace that um, and then put the new filter in screw it back up again sometimes they have a torque setting on written on either the actual oil filter housing itself so that's the new oil filter in there with the new o-ring on it it's always a good idea to give that a smear of engine oil the rubber seal just so it goes in smoothly and then yeah we've got on the top we've got 10 newton meters which i'm assuming is a sump plug and then we've got 25 newton meters which is actually for the oil filter itself screw it up tighten it up so there you go that's all tightened up check that check that i've sprayed it all down with brake clean to get rid of any drips or any residue oil and that's all done so I can put the tray on the tray back on and then fill it up with oil but before I do that while it's up in the air I'm going to do the fuel filter because the fuel filter is underneath on these so we've got just a nut on there undo that nut uh, obviously with the drainer underneath it and then catch any diesel that comes out and then replace the filter okay so we've got a 36 mil spanner on there so it might be a good idea if you're going to be doing this kind of thing is to get a set of oil filter sockets which come in all different sizes so i've put a piece of plastic on there because we're halfway over the ramp on here so hopefully it will drip onto there and it will go into the drainer so that's that's the idea Again, it says on there 25 newton meters. So I think that's it for that. If you've ever done one of these on a Ford Transit, you'll know. <laughs> uh, they're, caught, they're sort of like a quarter turn, half turn jobby. So you think you're unthreading it and it doesn't and it falls off and it goes everywhere. There we go, we're starting to get a little bit more out of there now. So we'll let that just drain out a little bit. So in the box we've got the fuel filter which I believe just clips in and then we've got replacement o-ring there and then replacement outer seal so obviously we've got the outer seal here which is obviously replaced so I haven't made too much of a mess but I think uh, that was due for changing, I think. Look at that in there. Where's all that come from? 
How does that get inside the tank? Right, so that's all back together. New O-ring in there. I sprayed the new O-ring with a bit of WD-40 because it was quite dry and also the threads. So I screwed that back together. I sprayed it all down with brake clean. Um, so that is all done. This will need bleeding, obviously, but this has a pump in the tank, which I believe runs for quite a long time when you turn the ignition on. So it will self bleed. So I've put in five liters of 5W30 fully synthetic low saps oil, which I think is C3 specification. So five liters basically takes it up to maximum of dipsticks. Obviously when I start it up, that level is going to drop as it fills up the oil filter. So it'll probably need another half to a liter of oil in it. I have already turned the ignition on and off until the gurgling stopped in the tank. So hopefully it should start and it should run. So waiting for the oil light to go out, which it has. The engine light was already on, so I need to check for codes for that. So we're just gonna run it for a bit to get that oil circulated around the engine. Then we're gonna turn it off, let it settle, and then check the oil level and top up if necessary. Right, so oil's topped up on the level. So I've just got to do the air filter and the pollen filter. And I believe then that is it. I've scanned the car for codes looked at any issues there and any issues that I found obviously I will resolve so let's get on with replacing the air filter and it looks like that at it it looks like it's just held on with Phillips screws all the way around so just undo those screws and that should then just fold away so we've just got all of the screws loosened and then this just folds out like that so there's the filter so that's not too bad it's not in bad condition really. So it's always a good idea at this point to hoover or pick out or whatever, blow out with an airline, any crap that's inside here, because obviously that will just stick to the new filter. So get all that out. So I've given that a blow out with the airline new filter. There we go, so that's in there. Lid back on, screws back in then onto the pollen filter. So there you go, air filter's done, oil's topped up, I've given it a bit of a clean, a bit of WD-40, looks much better. So all the checks are done, the washer fluid I've topped up with screen wash and water. So that's pretty much it here for under the bonnet. So all I need to do now is just do the pollen filter inside. So onto the pollen filter, this is gonna be a little bit difficult for me to, to video. Uh, you will need to check to see where your pollen filter sits because it can sit in multitude of different places depending on your car. So sometimes they actually go inside the engine bay underneath a panel. Sometimes they can be behind the glove box. Sometimes they can be in a slot that goes in sideways. So on this particular model, there is a seven mil bolt which goes in there. And then there's two little plastic tabs so little plastic housing plastic cover and then you've got two plastic clips so this literally just comes out so inside the glove box when you open up the lid there are um, a few seven mil bolts which are quite easy to get to after you this trim piece has to come off as well on the side so that pops off little metal clips and then the pollen filter is in that flap there. A little clip on the side. And then this just folds down. So take note of the direction of the airflow, which direction it points. So just grab hold of the filter, pull it out. So yeah, get the old one out, new one in. This one doesn't actually have an airflow on it direction. So I can't imagine unless it's a carbon filter where one side is coated. I can't imagine it makes that much difference which way around it goes. So 
got the old one out. This one hasn't got an arrow on it, so it doesn't make any difference. And then just slot it back into the hole, clip it on, and then that's it. And then the glove box just bolts back in. All right, so that's it. I don't think I've uh, forgotten anything. I also just remembered that check your spare tire. If it's got a spare tire, the reason why I forgot on this one because it doesn't have a spare tire. So always check your spare tire for air and also for tread and for general condition because you're going to need that if you get a puncture. So that's it on this vehicle. So what I've just gone through there, I would expect if you, what I would call a service or inspection service. So if you take your car into a garage uh, or a professional who's charging you a reasonable amount of money to do a service on your car, this, the steps that I've just gone through is what I would expect them to do. Now, if it's just an inspection service, normally it's everything I've just done on the check over and an oil and filter change. So that, it depends on the interval on your particular car. Uh, every 10,000 miles or every year, generally, it should have an inspection service. So it will have a full check round like I've just done and then the oil and filter. And then the major service will be all of the items like the air filter, uh, the pollen filter and the fuel filter. So that's it. So hopefully you found something interesting from this and I hope I haven't forgotten anything that you're going to be screaming at me, but if there is, put it in the comments. If you've got any comments, any suggestions, put it down in the uh, comments box below. So I hope you found this interesting and I'll see you in the next video. See you later. Cheers.